It's called In the Garden. We're familiar with it. Mm. But if you pay attention to the words, especially in that very first phrase, says, I come to the garden. How? Hello. There are times when you have to get up and separate yourself. Even as Mark says, there are times when Mark 135, I believe it is, Jesus arose a great while before day mm -hmm. and separated himself from them mm -hmm. so that he might go and be with his father. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I can assure you that there are times in our lives when we can be in a crowd mm -hmm. and we got all the support around us, but it still feels like something's missing. Yes, wow. yes. And then if you just abandon your environment mm -hmm. and lift up your eyes to the hills from which come of your help you begin to realize God does have it and as you rest in him and as he leads you through whatever uh, uh, valley or shadow or situation that you and I may be facing 
God will bring us through. Amen? Amen. Hymn number 116. Now, I tell you, this song is special. And I would guarantee that if you just open up your spirit, God will speak something to you as well. But I don't want to rush it. You know, sometimes we get into a worship and praise mood, <laughs> and we rush right straight through everything. Yes. And you fail to listen to that still, small voice that's trying to get our attention. Amen? Yes. Matter of fact, I had a conference with a preacher yesterday, and one of the things that we kept talking about is all the noise that's around us, but God is trying to get us to pay attention to that still, small voice. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the song of God is glory. Good morning. 
Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. This is Pastor Appreciation Month. Amen. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. For other foundation can no man lay that that to the gate, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Building faith, family, and fellowship on the principles and promises of God's word. We want to welcome our visiting friends, and we trust that you've been blessed being in our presence, and we're always happy to have you with us. Our talk for today. You have been on a long uphill journey, and your energy is almost spent. Though you have flat, flattered at, flattered at times, you have not let go of my hand. I am pleased with your desire to stay close to me. There is one thing, however, that displeases me, your tendency to, to complain. Mm -hmm. You may talk to me as much as you like about the difficulty of the path we are following. I understand better than anyone else the stresses and strains that have afflicted you. You can uh, ventilate safely to me because talking with me tempers your thoughts and helps you see things from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 31, 25, Philippians 2, 14 to 15. Our key theme and verse for 2022 together, be, be still, still and know that, that I am God. God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalms 46, 10 to 11. Trust, Trust God, God and rest in him. The year has changed. The pandemic is still here. Vaccines <coughs> and boosters are available. Remember, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Yes, Psalm 24 1. Trust in Him, depend on Him, and rely on Him. Pastor James N. Gray. Sunday, October 9th, 8 a.m. was our PDM meeting. 11 a.m. was morning worship. Yes, Holy Communion will be following morning's worship. Sunday, October the 16th, 2022, morning worship begins at 11 a.m. And Sunday, October the 23rd, <coughs> Morning worship begins at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Also remember, authentic manhood Bible study is every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. until October the 29th. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. 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 Let me jump on the heels of that last announcement. Yes, we've been uh, having a blessed time in the authentic manhood class. However, we will not be meeting this Saturday as we will uh, be actively participating in the 2020 American Diabetes Walk for Diabetes. And we have a team from here that we need to be really grateful for and praise God for. And uh, we anticipate being out there. Uh, we ask that you pray for us that uh, not only the weather will be um, good to us, but that our bodies will be good to us. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, it is a refreshing thing, but it's also a very important thing that we recognize and realize that this diabetes is nothing to play with. Amen. And... Uh, as I see a couple of fans down here, I was uh, looking for some other things earlier this morning. And we do have a box of diabetes fans up here that we need to get out maybe next Sunday. Get them out and, and uh, make sure everybody get a diabetes fan. Um, you may not have it, but somebody down the street may have it. Mm -hmm. You may not have it, but the person that you uh, sit next to may have it. And you may not have it now, but there may be a day when they inform you that it just showed up. That's the way it was when I was getting ready for an operation and uh, we were getting ready to do an EKG. And, and the doctor just happened to tell the nurse, and he got diabetes. I said, hold it. What did you say? <laughs> and he said, uh, Said it again. I said, You ain't treating me for no diabetes. And what it was, it was, I was 
pre-diabetic all those times, he just never said it in front of me. Mm -hmm. So we need to educate our families, mm -hmm. educate mm -hmm. our yeah. Yeah. and not play with this thing, amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. amen. Uh, again, I want to uh, recognize, I do have a uh, an email newsletter from uh, both a friend and a colleague and a former classmate who uh, gave up uh, his ministry and life here in America. He's a missionary now over in Paris, and he's taking his entire family over there. One of the interesting things, he went to school with our son, but his father-in-law taught me when I was up at Manor. And we are grateful to know that they're doing well. Actually, he was uh, having a knee operation recently. I'm talking about um, missionary Bill Campbell, and and uh, in this newsletter, he was sharing about some of the folks that they meet on the mission, and he was uh, in the process of a, of a baptismal. I was uh, looking at that very carefully. The interesting thing, God connects dots, because I went to see my eye doctor, and the first thing coming out of his mouth was, first of all, hi, and then house bill. Mm. You know, God has connected us so that we have even a prayer circle outside of here for other people. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. And then there are several others. There are a number, of, there are a couple of other folks. Uh, I have a couple of other uh, young um, co-workers that just went home and some others that uh, the names and the number and brother uh, brother Tyrone has death in their family as well so we want to continue to pray for them mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be listening to see if uh, there are services coming in anytime soon amen, amen. amen. Um, again we uh, want you to remind you that uh, we will not be here for the uh, authentic man with this Saturday we will be down at the Navy Yard uh, at the Diabetes Walk. Amen? Amen. And uh, we are, uh, I did hear our administrator mention that, yes, this is Pastory, Pastor's Appreciation Month. And, uh, you know, I forgot all about that. Well, all the pastors I was talking to all this week, I've been in one-on-ones with a lot of pastors all week long. And, I guess we just encouraging each other, and, and uh, it does lighten a little. Amen? Amen. Amen. That being said, I want you to continue to pray for this neighborhood, for the community. I want you to pray for our country, pray for uh, the violence that's going on all over. Uh, I was on the corner yesterday and talking with some of the folks, and I, I mean, I know these folks, but... When, when, when folks start mentioning how um, folks are afraid just to go get gas now yes. because of some of the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, need to, uh, we need to really uh, prepare ourselves because what's happening now is folks are starting to pack. And uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm still listening to hear that report from uh, I heard it last night, I saw it again this morning about how uh, these three guys got killed and the guy that shot them stayed and waited for the police. Yes. It's interesting to try to figure out how that happened. And one of the uh, family members testified, he said, you know, they don't understand what happened. He said, I was supposed to have been with them last night. We just chose to sit back at the house. Mm -hmm. So here again. We need to be praying. And I want you to pray for us because some of these uh, brothers and communicators that we've been talking about, uh, we're looking at doing some things where we can go out and also interact in some other ways. Um, that being said, if you have high school children or otherwise, I did not get to print it out, but the... Uh, the AID Conference is, again, it's going to be the 29th of October. That's the American Association of uh, Blacks in Energy, and we will be having our BEAM event, Black Energy Awareness Month. 
will be on the 29th of October, that's on a Saturday, down at 23rd and Market in the Pico Electric Building. And uh, uh, I'll try to get some flyers printed out, and those that I have your email, I'll try to shoot you an email with that information so that we can try to, uh, I believe the 15th is the final day for registration. And, we have like an online registration. You go online at eBite, e I think it is, and you can go ahead and register for the event so we get good solid head counts. That's why we need to uh, try to get that information. Amen? Amen. That being said, let's uh, <clears throat> let's look to the Lord. Merciful Father, we honor you today and we thank you, thank you for the way yes. that you have such a, a, a massive world yes. to manage. It's massive to us, but Lord, we read in your word that there was a day that you said, let there be life, and you brought all these things together. It did not strain you. It did not exhaust your power, your authority. Unlike us, we can put a light in and it'll trip the circuit, but Lord, nothing trip with you. Father, we thank you that even with all of the chaos that we see, you are still sitting high and you're looking up. We thank you that when 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 man failed and when we uh, went away from the plan of God, you already had your plan in, 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 in such a state that your son, before the foundation of the world, he had already agreed to come and to intercede and take our place on a cruel cross called Calvary. We thank you that he died, he got up, and even now he sits on your right hand side, still making intercession for us. Lord, we pray this morning that you will remember all those under the sound of our voice, all those that might even be visiting with us out in the multimedia family. We pray, Lord, that you will touch hearts and touch minds. Mm -hmm. And this morning, Lord, we want you to soften our hearts. We want our hearts to be so soft and so pliable that, Lord, if there's something that you want to get to us, that, Lord, it will get through the way that it should. Sometimes, Lord, we get hard-hearted. Sometimes we get stubborn. Sometimes, Lord, we become very resistant to the things that you are Pressing and pointing and steering us to. And there are times, Lord, where you have to allow us to go through sometimes a valley or a shadow just to get our attention. But we thank you, dear God, for your long suffering. We thank you for your grace. And we just pray, oh God, that you would enlarge our territory so that, Lord, we can become a bigger part of the mission of God. Yes. Lord, we pray that you would help us to recognize and remember that we're only here because we're on an assignment. And the assignment is given by you. The empowerment is given by you. The direction is given by you. And the keeping is given by you. We pray, oh God, that by your spirit, you will help us to get, get out of the way so that, your Lord, we can see you we need to be following you rather than getting so presumptuous that, Lord, we try to lead the way and, 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 and expect you to follow us along and join our program. Lord, we want to resign ourselves to be submissive unto you and your will. God, we pray even right now as Peter prayed in the garden, as Jesus prayed in the garden, and he said, Lord, if let this cup pass, but nevertheless, not my will, let thy will be done. Lord, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen us so that we can be the instruments to help others to find strength and hope in these dark and dismal times. Lord, none of this catches you off guard. And we pray that, Lord, while we have to go through it, that, Lord, we can see you and you will see us. As the scripture says, you are a light unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Let us see the light. Let us follow the light. Let us be a reflection of your light so that they might see us and see our good work 
and glorify you. Bless your word as it goes forth from Thank every you. branch of Zion yes. lifting yes. up Jesus. Thank Bless you. your word mm -hmm. from those that are oh, transitioning yes. and tran oh, on, on, God, in transportation yes. and trying oh, to communicate. God. Those, Lord, that you oh, might God. allow somebody to come up alongside them. Bless your word as yes. we become like yes. Philip the Evangelist yes. sitting beside wow. the young man wow. that did not understand what he was yes. reading. Help us to have the word to yes. share with them right. so that they can understand yes. and they can right. hear and they can know. Yes. God, glorify yourself as we seek your face. And even right now, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Our hearts say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And our hearts say amen. 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 This morning, I'm going to ask you to please pray with us. But also, I want you to turn with us, Lord God, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. While you're turning, would you repeat after me? I will bless the Lord. I will bless, bless the Lord, Lord at all times. At all times. His praise, His, His praise, praise shall be in my mouth. Shall be in my mouth. Lord God. Matthew chapter 25. things that are happening in our world that we need to be mindful of. And there are people that we meet on every occasion and in some cases God wants us to really be able to touch base with them. Now there are times when God will tell you to, to be still. Mm -hmm. And there are times when he may not let you speak mm -hmm. what you want to speak. All right. And there are times he may not let you speak when you want to speak. Yeah. But when he gives you an opportunity mm -hmm. and nudges you yeah. for an utterance, All right. we need to seize the moment. Speak, Lord. In Matthew chapter 25, 25 picks up where Jesus is a continuation from the narrative in 24. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was trying to prepare folks and make them aware of what end times are going to look like. All right. And as he was sharing these things, and uh, one of the things about the Bible, you know, there was a immediate context. He was speaking about the Jews and Gentiles and things of that nature. But by virtue of application and by virtue of the fact that God said that his word mm -hmm. shall go forth and it won't return in void. There are some applications Amen. that you and I should see for ourselves. Amen. I do have a concern for how people are beginning to react and respond mm -hmm. to the way our world is rapidly changing. Amen. Yes. And I need you to understand that the changes that are taking place mm -hmm. are not restricted. Mm -hmm. I want to say this in such a way that I make sure you get it. The changes that are happening are not restricted or limited to streets. Amen. Mm -hmm. They're not limited to the streets. If you catch folks on a one-on-one, -on -one, catch them at the right time, catch them when they feel like talking, 
or as our morning meditation says, catch them when they start complaining or venting. Mm. Mm. That's why I still appreciate the old time testimonial service. Mm -hmm. In a testimonial service, I may hear things that you may accidentally slip out. Hmm. Yeah. Have you ever noticed when you get excited, you say things that you may not, and then later on you say, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to tell them that. But the things that you did not mean to tell are the things that give me a clue on where and how we need to pray for the people of God. Now, I'm not speaking directly to any local individual or anybody that might be under the sound of my voice right now, but you need to understand, I've been saying for years, I have a congregation that is not, that does not meet right here at Vincent. All right. Amen? Amen. Newsflash, so do you. Mm-hmm. Right now. Because if you're still on planet Earth and you belong to Jesus, you're on mission for the Lord, Amen. whether you have embraced it or not. Mm -hmm. right you may not be engaged yet, mm -hmm. but you are on mission for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And our mission is simply to make Christ known. Amen? Amen. And that's not so that you might be like the Phillies last night <laughs> who got themselves into the next stage of the race. But it's so that we might glorify God. So that we might point folks to Him. But this is a very special passage. And there's a couple of different ways mm -hmm. that I'm, I can go. Mm -hmm. But I want to follow the way the Lord wants me to go today. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Beginning with verse 1, and I believe today I'm going to go old school. Old, straight up, King James. Amen. <laughs> 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 I heard that. All right. <laughs> then the kingdom of heaven will be. See, he's trying to help them to understand what things are going to be like. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you should be hearing a lot more these days yeah. is you're, you're hearing a lot more folks talk about kingdom discipleship, mm -hmm. the kingdom mm -hmm. of God, instead of the highlight of my church, your church, this church, that church. See, it's a kingdom issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Before this church came into existence, yes. before it ever became a fall, wow. Wow. it was still a kingdom mission. Amen. So he says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids. This is a, a parable. Who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Five of them were foolish. And five were wise. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to understand mm -hmm. that I didn't write that. All right now. Mm -hmm. It Amen. says that in your Bible too. Amen. Pay attention to God. Amen. Because we need to understand the mind of God so that we can follow the mind of God. Like Jesus said, uh, that that uh, uh, I mean Paul says, let this mind be in you, which is also oh, in where Christ Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Verse three. The five who were foolish didn't take or did not take enough oil, olive oil, for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, mm -hmm. they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Said something about being drowsy earlier, didn't it? Mm -hmm. At midnight, they were roused by the shout. Look, 
the bridegroom is come. Come out and meet him. Verse 7. All the bridesmaids, you that? All the bridesmaids got up mm -hmm. and prepared their lamps. Mm -hmm. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil. Because our lamps are going out. Well, well, well. <laughs> but the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourself. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. <laughs> in the translation that I have, I'm, I might have pulled one of my other translations up for, the, for this document, but at verse says the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, oh God, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Yes, yes. I want you to identify this thought. Now I'm going to share both things that I was pondering because sometimes I know that the videographer may put one out but I'm going to tell you which one that I, I, I believe we need to really center in. I was initially thinking about locked in or locked out. See, because when you receive the Lord, he ain't tossing you away again. Right, Over in John, he says, all that the Father has given unto me shall come unto me. Him that cometh unto me shall I in no wise cast that out. But the Bible says that that door was locked. Remember the picture of Noah mm -hmm. preaching for 120 years. Amen. Everybody mocking and laughing and looking and observing. Mm -hmm. But then God told him who to put in the ship. All right, now. And the Bible says, the Lord closed the door. Amen. But what I want you to hang on to mm -hmm. is this. Because I have such a concern uh, not only for those that name the name, and I know, I want you to understand what I'm saying. I want you to hang on to the thought, preparation mm -hmm. for your destination. Right. Mm. Preparation for your destination. And why is that so important? Because no matter how much preparation you might make mm -hmm. for somebody else, Every time I, I, I witness these grieving families, mm -hmm. I hear all the preparation that they're making for somebody else. But then I hear such things <coughs> that make you wonder whether they prepared themselves mm -hmm. for the real deal. Because the text says, no man knows the day nor no, the no, hour. No. I got a call just the other day of another young person, <coughs> about 38 years of age, that went home. And I keep hearing, as I look and observe this other family, and all they say is, <coughs> they were too young, too young, too young. Another phrase I keep hearing is, no parent is supposed mm. <coughs> yes. 
Bless you. Thank you. No parent is supposed to bury their child. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yet you see all through the Bible. Well, well, well. Where it does happen. Yes. Yeah. See, the circumstances may be different. Well. The situations are different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, it opens up a big hole in our hearts and in our spirits. But we need to remember that our preparation is for our destination. And if we fail to do so, as we'll see in this text, there is a difference in the outcome. I know the Lord is my shepherd. I know the Lord is my shepherd. I know the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. I know the Lord is my shepherd. I know the Lord is my shepherd. I know the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall. in their life, and I've had this to happen twice in my own life, where someone reached out or someone called out or someone sent me word 
And I remember on this one occasion, my father told me that a certain person was looking for me. I did not know that they were ill. I did not know how ill they were. Mm -hmm. I did not know how close they were to crossing over. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that God mm -hmm. had made some changes in their lives. Well. But when I went to that home going service, the one thing that gave me a little bit of gracious peace is the fact that I knew and understood from their living testimony that God had stopped by. All right, all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And had a conversation in their life. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I heard testimony just the other day about how in their humanity, this particular individual... Uh, their sister wanted a sandwich and they just wanted to be left alone that day. Mm -hmm. They had no idea that the very next day that sister was doing all night. Well, well, the text says no one knows the day or the hour yes. Amen. when the Lord <coughs> is going to call right. for you and I. Yes. See, we're living in a time when more and more we see people expressing concern for the things that can alter mm -hmm. their mortality. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. We have been listening and watching and working with folks and we see mm -hmm. how uh, when you start bringing God into the conversation, well, the crowd begins to disperse. Oh my God. But some of the things that are getting folks' attention these days are gun violence, mm -hmm. drugs, yes. senseless shootings, yes. innocent victimization. Mm -hmm. Innocent yeah. victimization, what does that sound like? Mm -hmm. Sounds like something you might hear on TV, but here's what it is. Mm -hmm. Even as late as yesterday, someone sent me a clip. And in this particular clip, mm -hmm. It highlighted a pastor whose wife had just gotten shot. Mm. How did she get shot? She was laying in her own bed at night. Mm. And the bullet came through the wall. Mm. And hit her in the head. And the bullet went through the head and lodged some way down, he said, in her sinus. Mm. How many times have we heard of these children? Being innocently yes. victimized. Yes. Yes. Schools mm -hmm. and other such. Yes. Folks hijacking vehicles. Yes. Yes. And don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and running and trying to hide and trying to get away from somebody and wind up up on the pavement plowing people down. Yes. And folks are losing lives. Mm -hmm. At which point we begin to see. We begin to see mm -hmm. that the left out mm -hmm. needed some preparation All right, now. for their destination. Yes. yes. Those five that were left out mm -hmm. needed some preparation for their destination. Mm -hmm. are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. I'll never forget this one service that we were in preparation for, and as I'm Speaking with the family, it was for a child. And, and my heart was uncomfortable because I'm, whenever we come with a family and we begin to try to work with them and try to comfort them and try to understand the family's needs and understand the direction and the flow of the service, one of the things that I'm always looking for, and I'm counseling and coaching you right now, you know the Lord. Amen. Make Amen. sure your family know you know the Lord. Amen. 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 If you know the Lord, if you don't plan your own service before it's time, at least make a demand that they put way up top yes. that you receive the Lord oh, Jesus God. Christ Amen. as your personal Savior. Don't leave nobody guessing. Amen. Amen. Because I begin to ask and I say, well, I'm trying to figure out what their expectation was. Because they 
the text says that when the bridegroom came, Amen. he had the door open. All right, now. And the text says he shut the door. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the local pastor that shut the door. Speak, it wasn't the local pastor that called him from labor to reward. Speak, it wasn't the local pastor. Yes. It wasn't even you and I. All right, now. But the preparation that needs to take place in their lives need to take place while they have life. Mm -hmm. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, right. I know that we don't want our children mad at us and upset with us. But I'd rather you be mad at me for five, ten minutes and then you come back rejoicing for the rest of your life because... I understand what you're talking about. All right. All right. Think about what happened when Jesus was confronted by Nicodemus. We're talking about the preparation mm -hmm. for your destination. Mm -hmm. John chapter 3. The Bible says that, uh, that, that Jesus was at a place. And just like normal, Nicodemus, like a lot of other folks, <laughs> amen, they ain't going to ask you a whole bunch of questions about Jesus in front of nobody. Right. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Yes. And as he began to inquire by night, Rabbi, we know that thou te art a teacher come from God, but no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Mm -hmm. Now, the important piece that I want, that the, the, the hinge pit is that Jesus didn't waste no time theorizing. Mm -hmm. Amen. He didn't waste time going through all of the speeches and going through the scrolls and going through all that kind of detail. He just comes straight out and said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All right now. Amen. Amen. See, there are things that I can hear you say. All right now. And then when I pass them through the filter of the text, sometimes I can agree with you. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I got to ask some questions. All right. Yeah. Because the text says you'll know a tree by what? It's fruit. By fruit. All right. right. Now. Go ahead. Amen. And you can keep coming in here telling me how much you're in love with the Lord. And in between every other word of the speech that you're trying to frame, you cussing me out or cussing somebody out. All right now. Wow. Yes. Yes. You give me an indication that there's some preparation. Mm -hmm. All right now. For your transformation. Help us, Jesus. The Bible goes on to show that Jesus did not engage in frivolous conversation. Mm -hmm. As Nicodemus continued to pour out questions. That would lead away from the truth. Go ahead, Nicodemus said, uh, Lord, how can a man be born again when he's already old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? He wanted to go into a health discussion, a science discussion. All right, now. Jesus' response was sharp, precise, and to the point. See, I, I, I learned a lot about how. Uh, uh, Jesus fielded questions and sometimes I might irritate you because you'll ask me a question and I might take you down a rabbit trail before I give you an answer. Jesus will take you down a road and make you think about what you're asking yeah. before he answers. Listen to what he, he did. And that's why oh, he also taught in parables. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus answered in verse 5. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of a water, and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit, marvel not. Right back to the point that I say to you, you must be born again. And I say this for the benefit of those that may not see me face to face. I want you to understand that I love you. And I care for you, but I care more for you than you might think I do by virtue of the straightforwardness of what I just said. 
Jesus was straightforward with Nicodemus. He didn't bite his tongue. He didn't waste his time. He came straight out. No, here, listen, listen to what the Bible says. No man knows the day or the hour. But listen to what else the Bible says. It's appointed unto what? Every man wants to die. And after death, what? Judgment. Listen to what else the Bible says. Yeah. And we talked about this in Sunday school last week. Yeah. And in and, 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 and Sunday school, we talked about how old Herod was a proud and an arrogant man. And he was all puffed up. Mm -hmm. And what did Herod do? Well, Herod felt like I done did uh, 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 justice in all these people that I'm pleasing because I have put James to death. And he set his sights on putting Peter to death and others like that. But what happened is, while Peter was in jail, God stops by. All right now. Pulls Peter out of jail. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Has God pulled you out of a set of circumstances? Right Amen. Amen. And, and if God pulled you out of a set of circumstances, yes. Yes. have you stopped long thank enough to thank him? Thank have you stopped long enough to praise him? Thank have you stopped long enough thank to say, hey God, I know it ain't me. Or do you just go on down yeah. here prancing you, and Lord. showing off your blessing Thank and you. not showing off your yeah. blessing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus is the blessing. He's the one. And, 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 and I want to make it clear that just because your name is on a church roll, all right now. I want you to see in this text that all ten of these bridesmaids. All right now. They bowed together. All right now. Say so. Only Jesus knows yes, yes, what's yes. going on in the yes. human heart. Yes, yes. We can all walk down the street, and when we're in yeah. school, they tell you to get in line, and they might tell you what order to get in line, but if you standing in that line, it doesn't matter about you whether you're in height or whatever the case might be. The only one that knows the real deal is the God that has already examined your heart. All right now. When the ten lepers were together, and all ten lepers had the same problem. And they went up to Jesus and they asked Jesus right, uh, to, to give them a healing. Yes. And Jesus said, go show yourself to right. the priest. All, right. all ten yes. walked together My down God. the highway. Yes. But oh, all ten, all, right. all ten yes. got the healing. Go but ahead. the Bible said only one stopped, one. looked at himself, yes. checked yes. himself all out, right. turned around. Go back to the Lord to give him some praise. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Now, those other nine did not know whether they were going to make it to the priest. You understand where I'm trying to go today? We don't know the hour. We don't know the day. We don't know the circumstances. We don't know the end game of God. Amen. So the point is that we need to understand that we need proper preparation. Yes. Notice in this text that an invitation is given. My mind. Invitation is given. Yes. Point one. Mm -hmm. Now who's the invitation given to? Mm -hmm. All ten verses. Mm -hmm. Amen. All ten were together en route to the bridegroom. They had a purpose in mind. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? When we come to worship, we should have a purpose yeah. in mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I sent our leadership team a uh, message a few days ago Amen. that I saw and, and I, I, I just believe that we all need to remember. Mm -hmm. They say we need to remember mm -hmm. that the one mm -hmm. that has called us, mm -hmm. the Lord is the one that we should be preparing mm -hmm. for worship. Amen. 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 I'm going to see if I can pull it up real quick so you can hear it exactly like they said. I don't even want to want to steal this thought. He said, in worship, mm -hmm. we often fail to remember mm -hmm. 
that God is the primary audience. Yes. God is the primary audience. Yeah, yeah. That's why I keep reminding you that when the Lord done delivered you, that ain't your testimony. Right now. That is a testimony of what God yeah. is Amen. doing in your life. Amen. Amen. When God delivered yeah. you in that accident, yeah. that was God's testimony. Yeah. When God got you up off that hospital bed, yeah. that was God's yeah. testimony. Yeah. It's yeah. not yours. Yeah. God gets yeah. the praise out of all he also go on to say, we are not to design worship yes. to please a crowd. Yes. We engage yes. in worship yes. to praise our God. Yes. Yes. I hear what I'm saying? Yes. See, the, 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 the ten verses, they all yes. Yes. got the same invitation. Mm -hmm. yes. And they all had a purpose in mind. What was their purpose? Their purpose was yes. Yes. to go to the bridegroom. Yes, now, underneath your purpose, sometime I got to check out your motive. Right. 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 What is your motive? Mm. Well, for trying to keep that purpose. Well, if your motive is just to get first in line, if your motive is so that you can get some more clicks and some more links, right. if your motive is so folks can recognize you, all right, all right. guess what? You may have a problem when you get there. All all right. Right. All right. All right. They all had a destination yeah. in view. Their destination was to get to this wedding. Amen. 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 And, and, and they all had an expectation. Mm. What is their expectation? That they be received at the wedding. Amen. Mm. Yeah. You need to think about that. Go ahead. See, we got a destination, but we have an expectation mm -hmm. with that de destination. Mm -hmm. But there was a problem and their problem was the difference of opinion about how to prepare for the event. You know, there's another parable that Jesus told. And, and in this particular parable, he was talking about a, 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 a wedding feast. And this one guy, you know, they invited folks and folks didn't come. Then they invite some more folks and, they, and he said, well... There's still more room, and he invited. He said, "Go out to the heads and the highways yes, and yes. compel them to come." And he invited all these other folks. And this one guy, he had such an attitude that he didn't even bother to, 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 to change his clothes. He didn't even divide. The, he didn't even bother to try to make an appropriate appearance. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? He didn't even act like he was gonna fake it. My my my. Help I've seen Lord. some folks like that. <laughs> they come in. Mm -hmm. Want to take over the worship service? All right. You got a testimony that's better than everybody else's testimony? Mm -hmm. Well, well. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus. They want you to know where I've been and where, what I've done, done and right. how the Lord done delivered me and, yeah. and, and, and all that great stuff. Mm -hmm. yes. But they never give God mm. his press. Mm -hmm. All the press is about you. Amen. You see, we all got an invitation. Yes. But our preparation may be different. Look at this. Preparation was different. The text shows that there was no difference in their purpose. Their purpose, everybody wanted to get to the wedding feast. Amen? Amen. There was no different location. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. They were going to the same place. So they traveled together. There were no doubt phone yeah. hustling. Even though they didn't have phones. They were listening to each other. They knew what was going on. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things that we, we were teasing about uh, from seminars in the past where they say you can get rebels. You can get a whole crowd full of folks. And in just a few moments, all the rebels will assemble together. All right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we watched it happen. Amen. We sit back and say, watch, 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 watch. Yeah. All the rebels get together. All right. All right. And what happened is, it's very interesting the way, see, Jesus was a master to a storyteller. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when he told stories, he wasn't telling stories to make you laugh. He wasn't telling stories to, to, to make you think that he was smart. He was telling these stories to get us thinking about the kingdom agenda. He said the kingdom of heaven, look at verse 1, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and they went to meet the bridegroom. You see, 
ten virgins going to meet the bridegroom, mm -hmm. going together. Mm -hmm. Same purpose, same place. All right, they travel together. They assembled in the same or nearby locale. Mm -hmm. They had the same hope of what? Meeting the bridegroom. Yeah. There was no mention of a difference in their qualifications or their status as virgins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes folks will start picking your, your, your reputation apart. You come into the crowd and they say, yeah, well, he this and he that and he that. And then all of a sudden you start categorizing folks. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Now. See, they don't they don't consider the fact that 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 since Jesus came into my life like that song go, mm -hmm. that God done made some changes in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I, I <clears> told <throat> the story before of how I come out of a home going and I speak to the family and they say, Oh, you remember him? And they said, No, no, no. And then he said, up such and such a place, and it's, uh, I ain't going to tell you where the places are because y'all start running around trying to dig in my closet. But then she turned around and she said, oh yeah. He said, oh, you mean that bad boy. And I said, not anymore. And I walked away. Ah. See, 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 you're not going to drag me back All right. All right. where God done excavated me from. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. All right now. Uh -huh. yes. All right. He done carved me out of there. Yes. Dug me out of there. Yes. Drug me out of yes. there. Yes. Yes. Placed me over here. He did it like Indiana Jones. He pulled out that little brush and put all of the little dust off of there and, uh, so that you ah. can see a different picture and stuff like that. And now you're going to drag me. No, no, no. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to live there. So what's happening is the text shows that there was no difference in their qualification. There wasn't five uh, trifling uh, uh, bridesmaids over here and five holy sanctified. It just said there was ten brides. And then it says, neither was there defined to be anything unfit. Neither was defined any unqualified. Amen. In other words, if uh, you have broken certain rules, you don't even fall under that classification of, of, of virgins anymore. Amen? Amen? It was like a Miss America contest. They all made the cut. And they were all assembled to be introduced. However, there was one overall comment that distinguishes them. Here is the distinction. Five were described as wise. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And five were described as virgins that took the, the wise, they took the initiative to prepare themselves by carrying an abundance of oil to meet the occasional mm -hmm. unexpected event. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. It's, it's something. My wife, she gets on me all the time. Because there are times when I'll let my tank run a lot lower. Mm -hmm. She don't play that stuff. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I recall a, uh, an occasion where I had a car, and I used to let that tank run all the way down about a quarter, sometimes eighth, but especially doing, getting ready for the winter, running down about eighth of the tank. And what happened, this thing failed on me. Mm -hmm. And when it failed, I took it to the shop, and I figured there was all kinds of mechanical stuff. He said, no, nah, you got a quarter tank of water in here. Mm -hmm. See, I was getting all that residue, so... What happens is then I started using that thing we used to call uh, gas treatment and all that kind of stuff. Yes, and I kept a lot of it yeah. in the mm -hmm. But what happens here, the five wise versions, and on the other hand, five wise versions, they, they, on the other hand, they did not. All right? The unwise versions or the foolish versions, they did not keep an abundance of oil with them. Mm -hmm. They made assumptions like I did. Oh, amen. Mm -hmm. That would prove to be fatal by ignoring proper preparation. Well, what did they do? See, the destination was defined mm -hmm. by the prepara and by the preparation. The Bible says it is appointed unto every man, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. once to die. Yes. Now after death there's judgment. Yes. Jesus made it clear to Nicodemus. That he needed to be prepared, amen, amen. Yeah. in his heart by the Holy Spirit to meet God or even see heaven, amen. Jesus concluded 
at the end of this particular parable, down at verse 13, let's look at what it says. Mm. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour, the hour when the Son of Man comes. You know, it's interesting that Jesus put that at the end of the parable. Amen. How many times does he have to remind us? Mm. How many times do we remind others of what we want? Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You ever notice a child, and the Bible says that, except we humble ourselves as little children, we shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But have you ever noticed when you make a child, promise to a child, they're going to make sure that you remember. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And 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 uh, on that movie, uh, Ice Cube plays on the vacation. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? See, we get those constant reminders. God reminds us all the time. But now here they go in, and you notice their mind is not on what God's mind is on. Mm -hmm. Your mind and my mind need to be in sync with the Lord. So our destination is linked to, to either blessings or consequences. Are you hearing me? Your destination is linked to either a blessing or some consequences. Why? Because your destination is tied to your preparation. If you fail to prepare, you fail. Are you understand what I'm saying? You don't understand what I mean. Well, I got all set up, got all my bags, and I go out to my car yesterday to get ready to come out here for the, men's, the uh, authentic band with Bible study. I get all the way out to the car, and I can't open the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why can't I open the car? Left the keys. I got my wife's car keys. <laughs> The last car I drove was her. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I did not change her key and key. my key before I walked. So now, my neighbors, if they were looking, they must say, oh, there he go again. I got all these bags, and I'll go all the way out to the car. Mm -hmm. And then I got to turn around and drag all these bags all the way back in the house, get the other key, and then drag all that stuff back out there. You, you understand what I'm going to See, God gives us time mm. to remember. He even allows circumstances well, to well, occur in our lives yes, to yes. remind us Be that we Lord. need to be properly prepared yes. for the journey that we're going on. Yeah, yeah. Speak to us, Lord. Amen. Yes. All ten versions got in motion. When the call came out. Mm. Here's the news flash. The five were moving without delay or hesitation. Mm. They got their stuff ready. They got up mm. and they were ready to rock and roll. Yeah. But the five foolish, they set out and they hit an unplanned delay. In that they were running out of the oil to complete the church. They come to realize, and many folks come to realize, that while they're on a hospital bed, this ain't looking good. Jesus. They look and they read the doctor's faces. Mm -hmm. This ain't looking good. Right. You might be on the subway, and you see somebody that don't look like they mean no good. And you start thinking, this ain't looking good. Well, when you start thinking, this ain't looking good, are you also thinking, I thank God that I've given my heart to him. I thank God that to be absent in this body, I thank God that if I get caught up in this set of circumstances, I thank God that I'm on my way. I thank God that if he come over to me, I've got a word that I can share with him that might change his destination as well. I thank God. My preparation is already out of sync. See, the Bible shows us that when they turned around and the foolish realized that we can't make it on what we got, 
What did they do? They go running over to the five wise virgins and they say, look, can you give us some of your oil? Amen. That sounds like a testimony I heard in here this morning. How the enemy want to distract you. How the enemy want to pull you back. How the enemy want to take your mind off what you're supposed to have your mind on so that what happens? The enemy already know he ain't going in. Right. He already know he's defeated. Yeah. He want to drag you down too. Yeah. So what did they say? Wait. Can you give us some of your oil yeah. so that we can make it? I guarantee you, if they gave them some oil, they would have did everything they could to outrun those other five so that they could get there and make sure that they got in before those others got in. You need to pay attention to that. Amen. Man. So the question is where were the five wise being selfish? Mm -hmm. No. You need to ask that question. All right, because see, that's where the enemy trick your mind. All right. All right, and that's where the folks walk up and whisper in your ear and say, and you should put your ear. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh Lord Jesus, help me. Oh, or were they simply prepared yes. as they should have been? Yes. Mm. Yes. See, when they went to purchase the oil, oil mm -hmm. when, the, when the foolish version went to purchase that oil, mm -hmm. something happened. All right. The bridegroom came. All right. well, the Bible says you don't know when he comes. That's right. That's Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now when I had that fall a few weeks ago, yes. on my way to the floor, you, are, you need to hear me. Right. On my way. To the flow. I'm praising God. I'm thanking Him. Even for the pain, I'm getting ready to enter. I don't know whether I'm going to hit that flow and slip on and find myself home in the presence of the Lord. But I was thanking Him while I was falling. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You and I need to have our preparation ready. So no matter what we come in contact with, we know. That if I live out of here right now, yeah. yes. Hey God, I see it a little bit. Mm. Are you understanding right what I'm saying? Thank you didn't hear yes. what I said. Right. I didn't say, hey mom. I didn't say, hey dad. Yes. Mom and dad can't do nothing for me now. Yes. It's yes. God that's got to get yes. me through this. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Mom and dad will wait. Yes. Eternity is long. Right. Yes. I'll get there after a while. Yes. But right now. I need to make sure that I am in tight with Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Only those who are ready went in to the marriage feast. Because the door was open. And, 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 and I like when you etymologize and you start looking at those words. And the Bible says in verse 10, while they were going to buy Yes. The bridegroom came, mm -hmm. oh. and those that were ready. Hey. Did you see that? Right. I got that underlined in mind. Right. Those that were right. ready. I want to ask a question this morning. Regardless of how cute you look, regardless of how well you feel, are you ready? Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, see, John the Baptist, he didn't have a chance to get a brand new suit. He was hanging out in the jail because he done told somebody some truth that they didn't want to hear. He was still hanging out in jail. And they eventually cut his head off. But he was still hanging out in jail. And when Jesus gave his eulogy, Jesus said, ain't nobody out there greater than him. Why? Because he was prepared. Bible goes on to show that when when and when they were ready, they went in with him to the marriage feast, mm -hmm. and the door was shut. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you realize? I love my wife. Amen. Amen. We've been married 48 years. Amen. But when I count it all up, it's 53. Amen. I understand what I'm saying. But guess what? She can't open that door. Amen. Mm -hmm. She can't shut the door. Mm -hmm. She can't say, God, I ain't ready for him to go yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I made that appeal with the Lord while I was standing there at my mother's bed. Mm -hmm. I said, come on, God. Mom was 89 years old. She was two months, uh, three months, two, two months shy of uh, her birthday. All right. I said, come on, God. Can't you give me 90? You can give me 90 now, Lord. Can't you, you give me 90? You can give me 90. Okay. You can ask. Yes. He said, asking you shall receive. 
seeking your knock and knocking the door be open. Yes, yes. But it's got to be according to His will. Yes, yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. You can beg all you want, but if it's not according to His will, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. He's not ignoring you. Yes. It's just watch this now. Watch this now. You need to remember this. His will trumps yours. Yeah. 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 And I don't have a problem with that. Well, well, well. Amen. All right. All right. So when I said, come on, God, come on, God. And when he gave me peace in my mind that he wasn't going to change his will, mm -hmm. then I start talking to her. Mm -hmm. You see, when the door was shut, mm -hmm. the conversation was over between the, 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 the wise versions and the other versions. Mm -hmm. They didn't even call out to them anymore. Mm -hmm. The text says, <laughs> I love it. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Yes. You hear that? Yes. Open to us. They didn't call the other virgins no more. Right. But the Bible says, he answered. The Lord answered. Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Anybody familiar with Matthew 7, I think 21 through 23, where it said, uh, uh, they come to the Lord and they said, Lord, Lord, mm -hmm. didn't we prophesy in your name? Did yes. we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? And Jesus turned around and said, hey, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Why did he not know them? Their preparation wasn't complete. You can dress up like a Christian. You can learn Christian language. Amen. You can learn how to do that, that, that sanctified march that we used to do coming down the aisle. We're marching. And we, 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 we can even learn that, that sanctified two-step, you know, where we you got some parts that walk down the aisle and they turn this way, turn that way, and all that. And when we were in the mail course, we used to, we used to do that short stomp and we spin on the new. We can learn all that stuff. <laughs> all that stuff. Yes. Well, but if your preparation is not right, yes. you're not well, right. And if you're not right, you're not going in. Amen. Amen. See, we all have been given an invitation yes. Yes. to do what? To come to the Lord. Yes. The invitation yes. came to us in a whole lot of different ways. Yes. It could be personal. It could have came through the Bible. could have come through the church, through a gospel tract, through preaching, teaching, Sunday school, vacation Bible school, TV, radio, music, movies. It could have even come to you by a sickness. Yes, yes. Hasn't Jesus asked folks if they wanted to be made whole? Yes. What did the man say in John chapter 5? I ain't got nobody to put me in the pool. He said, I didn't ask you that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be made whole? Is your preparation, yes. do you have a desire that you might be whole? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Whole? Yes. He's not just talking about your body. Yes. He's talking about your whole yes. being yes. wants to be involved yes. and engaged yes. Yes. with God. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. the Bible says once he was in sync, yes. his mind in sync, his heart in sync, his spirit in sync. Jesus said, get out from there. Pick up your bed. Go on about your business yes. and take this yes. stuff home. Right. God will do it for you. He will do it for me. My Even God speaking to your heart, we can have all received yes. an invitation. Yes. Have you taken care of your preparation for your destination? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. See, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, he spoke to who? Nicodemus. Are you understand? That was Nicodemus could be made whole by himself so that Nicodemus might make sure his preparation was right. His preparation was in order. Your invitation is for you. Not your mother. We used to sing a song. Not my mother. Not my father. But it's what? Me or me or what? I'm standing where? In the need of prayer. Not my sister. Not my brother. But it's me or what? I'm standing in the need of prayer. And if that is not where your focus is, you might be in danger right now. Yes. If you join the church because yes. your wife joined well, the church, well. but you never said, Lord Jesus, yes. like the man that 
If he held his head down, then he lift his head up, well, beat on his chest and say, have mercy on me. Yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Thank if you're not like the thief that was hanging on the cross yes. and he said, would you remember me when you enter into your kingdom? Yes. And Jesus said, this day. Yes. Well, Jesus gave him yes. the assurance yes. right yes. there on that yes. cross yes. that everything yes. is going to be all right. Why? Because right. his preparation, yes. preparation was in order. Right. I want you to understand yes. that this thief got an assurance from Jesus that everything when Jesus called Zacharias, what did he do? He called him by his name. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you right now that yes, Jesus can save a crowd. But he came and he died for individuals. Are you understand? Right. What do you yes. mean why he can save a crowd, but he died for individuals? Well, there are individuals that make up a crowd. Oh. Now, while Jesus is looking at the crowd, yes. he yes. can also yes. save you individually. Yes. Because as he can save, say, for instance, a sinking ship. He can save everybody from drowning in the ship. But that don't mean that everybody that, that got saved out of drowning on the ship, from right. drowning on the ship, got you saved to go home okay. to be in the presence of the Lord. Are you understand? I told you, like them, 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 those, those lepers, what did they do? They all got the blessing. They all got a healing. But some of them went away without the joy of the Lord being their strength. Are you yes. hearing what I'm yes. saying? Yes. I'm talking this morning yes. about your preparation yes. for your destination. Yes. If your preparation is right, yes. then you're going to be all right. If your preparation yes. is wrong, my challenge to you today my is God. you better stop now. You better drop the those knees. You better drop your heart. Yes. You better yes. bow that yes. head and say, hey, God, yes. you know me. You know my heart. What does Psalm 139 say? Yes. Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. Yes. Try me and know my thought. Yes. See if there be any wicked yes. way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Yes. If you don't know Christ, my Lord, yes. now is the accepted time. Yes. 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 Parents, stop trying to wish your children in heaven. Hmm. Yes. You keep challenging them until they say so. Yeah. All right, yeah. See, because if it's real to them, yeah. it'll be real to them. Yeah. And when they get it together for the Lord, yeah. I believe they're going to make sure that you know. Yeah. All right. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, when, 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 when I start playing tag with sin, and I was messing around on Backsliders Highway, I was clean. I knew the language. I'd already been down the path. But God knew that while I was sitting there fronting for Jesus, can you say that? Fronting for Jesus. Fronting for Jesus. Jesus. Front for Jesus. Say it again. Front for Jesus. Front for Jesus. Front for Jesus. While I was fronting for Jesus, guess what? I got away with it one Sunday. And I come back because I said to myself, ain't no way I'm going to cry in front of these folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, that, what did that thing say? All right, now. Worship is for God. All right, now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I come back and yes, got yes. to that same spot again. Yes. There was a couple weeks in between though. Mm -hmm. But I had, to, I had to get my macho back together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I come marching back through. And... and Reverend Sullivan was preaching. Dad was sitting over there. And the Holy Spirit was running around the room. And he stopped by. The invitation was given. I'm standing there, and actually I had a baby in my arm. And I'm standing there. And then God started turning me upside down. And I said, hmm, Lord. I ain't crying. I just said it before. I ain't crying from these folks. And then the Holy Spirit whispered in my ear. He said, This may be your last chance. Are you listening to me today? This may be your last chance. See, see, see. That's why I really thank God that He allowed us to be in the sanctuary. See, sometimes there are things you can see in the sanctuary that folks that may be at home 
and they don't have nobody to come alongside them. They don't have see somebody might see that you're wrestling with the spirit of God and while you're wrestling, see somebody here might see it. And if they see it and, and, and God give them direction and they, they start looking over and they zoom in on you and they start you start praying for them. You understand what I'm saying? You start zooming and locking that prayer yeah, in on yeah. them. And while you praying for them, you know, when 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 I said, ain't no way, ain't no way, the Holy Spirit said, this could be your last chance. And when he said, this could be your last chance, let me tell you something. That baby had to go. Amen. I didn't throw him. I passed him on over. And I come on down that aisle. And I surrendered. Not my suit, not my attire. I surrendered my heart. I wanted to make sure that my preparation was in order. You understand what I'm saying? If your preparation yes. is right, yes. Yes. you're going to be all right. All right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Take, take five wise versions. They had all that they needed. And they made sure that they were not playing tag with sin. Yes, and when yes. the door was open and yes. the cry came out, they went in. Yes. And as they yes. went in, yes. guess what happened? The Lord went on and blessed them all, all right. right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Guess what? God shut the door. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm Amen. saying? All right. and, and, and that's what I mean by being yes. locked out or locked in. All right. Because All right. when God shut the door and you in, you in. You lock in. Right, but if God shut the door Amen. and you have rejected him, guess what? You locked out Amen. until God opened that door. Right. Are you understanding well, what I'm saying? Say so. A father and a God. We ask this morning that you touch our hearts. We ask that you would cause us to be open and honest with you. We struggle sometimes, Lord, because we are in this world. And we struggle sometimes because we have an old nature that wants to fight against our new nature. Mm -hmm. Father, what we need to do is get drowned mm -hmm. in your promises. Because yes. in your promise, you promised that you would never leave us for yeah. the well In your promise, you said all that the Father has given you mm -hmm. shall come to you, and he that comes unto you shall you in no wise wow. cast out. You made a promise that there's no man that can pluck us out. Lord, we might go through struggles and we yeah. might go through yeah. those periods, oh Lord, well. where we need to come back and we need to fess up because that's why you made it so plain that if I confess my sin, he is faithful in each other to forgive me and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Holy Spirit, we are so thankful that the scripture says that we are sealed by you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And the scripture does yes. also give clarity in saying that we are sealed until yes. the yes. day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're the one that's going to take us home. Yes. So, Father, by your spirit, we ask that you would move through this congregation. If there's anyone yes. Yes. under the sound of my voice that has not made proper preparation for their soul salvation. That's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about our outward attire. We're not talking about our language. We're not talking about how smart we may think we are and how much we may be able to navigate around the subject and, and, and ask these questions that cause us to appear. Because even Nicodemus, Jesus had to make sure that Nicodemus understood Say, you're a smart guy. You're the teacher. Don't you know these things? Yeah. So, Father, we pray this morning. If there's anyone that's I don't know this that does not know you, massage their heart. Yeah. Cause them to say, hey, God, I surrender my will. Yeah. If there's someone at home that is going through and they need, oh, Lord, somebody to nudge them to be honest with you, we pray that the Holy Spirit 
would fill that place like he did in the upper room. Mm -hmm. And that he would massage their hearts, yeah. massage their consciousness, mm -hmm. so that they too might surrender their word, their will to you. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Yes. Lord, we all want to have the confidence that we are locked in. Mm -hmm. Absent in this body, home in the presence of the Lord. But Father, if we don't have that kind of confidence, we pray that you will speak to our hearts so that, Lord, you said also in your word, Behold, Jesus is still knocking on our doors. Isn't it a wonderful thing that Jesus can be on both sides of that door at the same time? He can knock on the doors of our hearts. If any man will hear his voice yes, yes. and open the door, yes, he promised it, Father. Yes. And so, mm -hmm. so, Father, we thank you. Thank you. We pray. Yes. We ask, oh God, yes. even now, that if there's anyone has a desire to surrender, they will be even now. If they're in this room with every head bowed and every eye closed, just slip up your hand and slip it down. Those at home, you can slip up your hand and slip it down. Guess what? God can see your hand. And the Holy Spirit can bring conviction right where you are. And God can surround you and bring to your attention, bring to your presence those that can encourage you. And if you are, are, are someone that know where we're at, you can get a hold of us. My prayer is also that God will bring folks into your circle of influence. So that they can encourage you in your walk. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for all that you're going to do. We praise you for all your people. And we praise you for everything, oh God, that needs to take place in our lives. So that we can be absolutely sure and confident in our spirit that, Lord, our preparation is right for our destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. Our hearts are thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Give God praise. Amen. Amen. Another news flash. How many folks will live eternally? How many folks are going to have eternal life? It's not a trick question. Mm -hmm. Everybody. You're either going to live eternally with the Lord or you're going to live eternally away from the Lord. And if you're away from the Lord, there ain't but one other place to go. So my challenge and my encouragement to you is to prepare yourself to spend time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can you give God a praise? This being second Sunday, we're going to make preparation at this time to worship the Lord with our Holy Communion. Amen. Turning your Bibles or your books to uh, Response Reading 590. 598. 598. Response Reading 590. Amen. We ask you to pray for us as we uh, make preparation for this walk this weekend. Uh, another thing I want you to pray for folks. Pray for folks that are taking medicines. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes those medicines can uh, give you side effects and they can, uh, they can make you look like you're trying to imitate David at that time and he was crawling all out the mouth, but he did it on purpose. Amen. And God used it for his deliverance. Response in reading number 598. 598. Amen. Amen. And that's out of 1 Corinthians 11, and it's verses 23 through 24. There were things that were going on in the behavior. I mentioned earlier how we can learn how to do certain things. We can learn how to fit in. Well, there was some bad fitting during that time. And there was some behavior that was not up to par. 
And what happened was Paul had to write back to them. See, when these letters came out, they came out for a reason. Amen? Amen. When a message is preached, it's preached for a reason. Amen. When a word is read, it's read for a reason. When God's word was preserved, it was preserved for a reason. Amen? Amen. So over in 1 Corinthians, as they were, uh, Paul wrote back to the church to give them some instructions on proper preparation and conduct in worshiping the Lord around the Lord's Supper. The Bible says, I'll read the light print and read the dark. We'll all read the last verse together. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take thee, this is my body, which is broken with you. This too is remembrance of me. See yeah, how God has always asked us to remember, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, amen, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For well, this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, Tarry one for another. Together. And, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Let me tell you what that last verse means. He said, the rest, if, if, if there's any other issues, when I get there, we can talk about it. And we'll set that in order as well. Amen? As we come together, uh, uh, there are two uh, orders, sacraments we call them, and that is Holy Baptism and the Lord's Supper. And what happens is that as we come together, and Jesus said, do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me, we're going to ask that we might bow our heads you notice in that reading, he said mm -hmm. that if we got some issues that are unresolved, you need to, you need to put that at the foot of the Amen. You need to deposit it before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. We're going to ask the Lord to bless. We're going to ask the Lord to bless this bread and this uh I usually say this drink, but this wine, I'll use the word that's in the Bible, but I'm, I'll let you know up front. Don't expect to get that. That's going to get you excited for the games. Right now. <laughs> what do we say? Worship is be centered around the Lord. He said, eat and drink as unto the Lord. Amen? Yeah. If there's if there's special need for assistance, somebody support you. Amen. Yeah. Let's look to the Lord. Oh, Brian. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
song that we used to sing as we were growing up. And I think it's rather appropriate when we think about your preparation for your destination. Because I want you I want you to go out of here thinking and concentrating on those things. This may be the last time. This may be the last time. This may be the last time, maybe the last time, I don't know. I said, oh, this may be the last time. Keep 
us from falling, presenting us faultless before your presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Let church say amen. 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 God bless you. And greet one another in the spirit of love. I shall not. I shall not be moved.